Hi, welcome back to EducateTube.com. My name is Sipski, your host. Today we'll be talking about different computer technology that is readily available to us today. Starting with the desktop, then I'm going to go to the laptop, then I'm going to go to the sub uh, notebook or the netbook, then we'll look at the tablet, smartphone, and then smartwatch. These are the technologies that's available to us today, and we're going to talk about their relevancy to our lives. Let's talk with the desktop first. Now, not many people now own a desktop. A reason for that, it is very bulky, it is stationary. You can't really move it around. It's uh, you know plugged into a wall and that's it. Now, there is a uh, use for it. There are certain group of people who actually still and will and uh, use it because of its power. Like professional gamers, uh, heavy graphic um, intensive uh, use of let's say video editing like 4k and beyond or you're talking about you know architect engineering those guys uh, or gals who uh, enjoy fast computing you know AI technology exists as well you're talking about you know you need the best of the best the desktop is it the reason for that is because you can fit in uh, multi-core CPU into this and put a massive huge amount of RAM into this. Now you're seeing you know 200 gig RAM uh, in this system with you know you're talking about like 20 core CPU into this desktop and you have like you know you know 20 30 terabytes of, uh, of a hard drive or SSD drive onto this desktop. And so you can put so much, and it's modular. You can actually replace it with a newer technology. And this is why a pro gamer love desktops. However, most of us, of course, um, won't have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. You need some kind of knowledge to build your own desktop. Not like it's not that hard, but you still need to know how to put it together and how to diagnose uh, the software hardware interface. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, I would say maybe five to ten percent of the population may still have a desktop, and it will still be relevant in the future as well because of you know what it, it's capable of. It's a very, it's a supercomputer. You can say you know, ha, you know, a supercomputer at home would be the desktop. Now, of course, the main type of technology for computer technology would be the laptop. The laptop, you know, nowadays compared to a few years ago, is more very powerful as powerful if even more powerful than uh, a desktop that was maybe two three years ago you have for example uh, a laptop that has a, a graphic card that was not even available three years ago you talk about gtx uh, 1080 uh, you know that's eight gig ram built into this uh, gpu and you have a cpu that is six core that is the latest greatest intel technology the 8850h Right? And then you have the RAM that can go all the way up to 64 gig RAM and you have a hard drive that can go all the way to, you know, five, six uh, terabyte, right, on the system. And depending on, you know, which SSD card you, you want to put in. But there's, uh, you know, in the consumer market, you're talking about two to four terabyte SSD can be built, put into these uh, laptop. And then the hard, uh, the, uh, you know, the laptop hard drive, that may even be more. So add them together, you can get all the way to 10 to 20 terabyte of data so you can see and of course the screen is quite big you can get all the way from 14 all the way to like um, 19 inch um, screen uh, and typically it's 15 to 17 inch uh, uh, screen and the screen could be 1080p all the way to uh, 4k and it's a uh, some of like the laptop from, for example from HP is dream color which match you know when you're doing like a uh, video editing uh, you know graphic designing it's it's a very nice uh, realistic color you can see all those technology built into this uh, laptop and the keyboard is amazing now because now they they're you know working on technology where the keyboard is very natural mechanical and when you're typing it it's just very fast you know you're, if you're good at typing you can feel it it's almost typing on a you know uh, a typewriter but even better okay so and then they have of course have built in the key um, keypad and buttons like a mouse and all that right and it's interfacing with the uh, USB-C and other uh, connection so pretty much um, I would say this technology will not go obsolete because it will continue on to improve uh, and more stuff can be put in and the, the main reason okay I, I believe is because of portability 
and the size of that screen. Because you think about it, you know, when you're watching a movie, when you're doing your work, you want a pretty decent screen. You know, a smartphone will not be adequate, right? That's, that's, that's child play. When you're talking about real work, you, you're going to have to stick with the uh, laptop and the keyboard, right? And, you know, when you're doing real work, you actually have to type properly, not like touch screen like that, okay? So I think laptop will be the main uh, work um, technology. Whereas this one, you know, you talk about office work where, you know, you require intensive, uh, you know, heavy computing, then of course desktop. Okay, now let's move on to this technology. This is the sub notebook or the netbook. Now this technology I think will be obsolete. This is something that um, we, well, some of them are kind of like between the two now, right? You have a uh, lab book, right? Lab uh, top, and then now you have a netbook. Well, now you have a tablet. So this is going to go away. However, I still enjoy uh, netbook. And I think the reason it's going away is because a lot, uh, not many company are building this. Um, they're now moving on towards a tablet. Uh, this is not bad. I like this technology because um, the fact that the screen is about 10 inch in size and there's a built-in keyboard and now if they increase the um, you know the process to like i5 you know fourth fifth generation or the i7 third fourth generation I think there's still one or two company that does it I think it's Acer that does this netbook and I think uh, you know if you're if you enjoy small compactness and powerful then you might want to go with that but this technology you know because of the laptop and a tablet it's pretty much going away it's not needed but you know if you are very particular about size then I, I would say yeah stick with it I still enjoy it by the way now tablet yeah tablet is one of those things that it's pretty much a mainstay for consuming uh, media like when you're watching Netflix when you're watching YouTube videos you're typing uh, short messages through your uh, uh, hang hangout uh, or Skype or whatever it is um, and you can there's a built-in video uh, sorry uh, a camera video camera in there um, so this is great for you know relaxing watching consuming the media so that this would be great but for work wise I don't think so this is not for work I mean you cannot really type on the screen you can type short uh, messages you know on Skype on uh, social media like Facebook and all that stuff but when you're doing like a, an essay and all that, this will hurt or strain your fingers. Now they do have a, uh, you know, external like keyboard, like you can slip it in like this one here. This is a Aces uh, Android tablet and it has a keyboard that goes with it. It's a great idea. And I think uh, it's a not, um, not bad at all. In fact, some people may argue that it might replace a, a laptop. Like for example, um, um, uh, Microsoft Surface Book uh, is trying to do that. Now the problem with that is the price, right? Their price is quite <laughs> for three thousand dollars. You know, you're thinking for that, and the and, and the spec is not that great either. You know, um, compared to let's say a, a, a laptop, unless they were able to do that, they were able to put in like you know GTX uh, 1080 with you know a six core processor with I don't know, maybe like 32 or 64 gig RAM onto that thing and cost you less than, you know, a lap, uh, less than a laptop or the same price, then yes, I would say, yeah, this is, this would definitely replace a uh, laptop. But, you know, the reason why it is not doing right now, the price, I mean, for some reason it's almost as uh, like 50 to hundred percent more expensive than a laptop when you have the same type of spec. Now, of course, the advantage of the, um, tablet it's, it's very convenient it's very light very thin you hold on it you can use it as consumer media uh, device or you can use it with your external keyboard you can make it into a work laptop which is great right but and like I said the problem with that is uh, most people want to separate their work from their play so you might they might have a uh, two di different system so they have a very powerful laptop and okay uh, tablet allow them to maybe just uh, watch Netflix or uh, YouTube and maybe do a little bit of uh, texting and you know social media stuff post uh, stuff on their Facebook okay last two is the um, of course most important is the smart phone because you know everybody pretty much have this thing this is very useful in terms of communication right you know obviously 
you're talking about like talking, texting, even video conferencing. This is the technology you have. So for communicating, for short messages, um, you know, emails and all that stuff, this is very useful. In fact, you know, compared to the rest, this is probably the technology to have. And uh, there's everybody doing that, using that. And a lot of, and the thing is with, uh, you know, Android and Apple, they have a lot of built-in uh, app, or you can download a lot of apps. You have millions and millions of apps with, you know, so much. I can't even list it out. There's just so much of it. Some I never heard of, but it's very useful. So, uh, you know, the smartphone is going to be around for a long time. Now, what's, I think what's going to happen with the smartphone, of course, is that it's going to be so powerful that it will, like, just like the tablet, I don't know, um, the tablet is still useful because of the screen size. Now both of these two, and the reason they still exist, these two technology exists, is because of the size of the screen, right? When you're working, you know, you're, you want a screen size, you can see the, the font and what you're typing and the images. So um, that's why I say that you can never have your uh, work as a smartphone unless, there's exception, unless this is so powerful, right? That it becomes just like a tablet, right? What you do is you take this smartphone and you put it onto the uh, the keyboard and and uh, you know a, a screen and all of a sudden this thing is a computer system. Now, if they can come up with something like that and it's as powerful as let's say a laptop, like you know with a GTX 1080, 8 gig RAM, you know 64 gig uh, gig RAM, uh, and then a CPU that is you know six core, ten core, whatever it is, you know as powerful as a uh, laptop. And then a lot of storage onto this <laughs> device, and you know all you do is slip it onto a docking system. Well, then all these technology, except for this, would be obsolete, right? But you know that would cost you probably arms and leg. But again, that would be in the future. Hopefully, they would be able to do that. Of course, lastly would be the smart watch. Now, what about smart watch? Well, smart watch usually is, is supplement to. The smartphone, you know, you see people, you know, using their Fitbit and all that stuff, which sync with their smartphone, keep track of their diet and their uh, heart rate and all that stuff, you know, what they do. Um, some of them um, may use it to call, but um, I see this um, on its own, not so useful unless, unless, of course, um, again, just like the smartphone, they were able to build all the technology onto the smartwatch. Like this one here, the one I have here is called FinFine smartwatch it has a built-in sim card you can actually put a sim card in here it is a full uh, android os system built into here so i can actually download apps in here and just like a smartphone you can do pretty much everything like a smartphone does of course the screen is quite small um you can communicate with you know google uh so you can tell google what uh what time is it and it will tell you what time is it like and all that stuff okay so on this watch the problem of course the screen is so small so it has to be more auditory between communicating between the watch. The only exception I can see is that if there's uh, it has so much um, powerful uh, CPU, GPU on, onto this smart uh, watch, it may replace a phone, a smartphone, because now all you need is just a, a phone with a screen, right? And then uh, it's communicating through some kind of higher technology of wireless uh, system, whether it's 5G, whatever it is, I, I don't know, you know? is able to communicate with the screen and you know there we go the screen now is pretty much feeding through um or the the technology the uh, the cpu is sending information to the screen on your smart uh, phone or just a screen itself um, or even a tablet like this one here right because you imagine your watch and then you put take this out and then there we go your information computer is now sending to the um the screen and you're good to go, right? So if that's what they're gonna do in the future, then I can totally see um, the smartphone or even the tablet like being obsolete. That is, if this is as powerful as a laptop. So again, it depends on you know how the technology moves. If one of these technology is as powerful as these two, obviously um, it will be gone. And because the reason for that is because the screen is just a screen. It's not a, a computer system anymore, but rather this is the screen. This is the, sorry, this is the computer or this is the computer. Then we really don't need a uh, computer inside this uh, tablet. It's just a modular uh, display screen, right? And of course in the future, maybe there will be uh, holograms. Who knows? I, I don't know if there's 
uh, that technology available to us in the future or a 3D system that's just projecting in, in the air. Um, if that's even possible in the future, if that is the case, again, the screen technology may change. So that's what's await us in the future. But as you can say for now, I would say laptop is still very useful. And in fact, I would uh, predict that the next 10, 20 years, laptop is still relevant to us. Same thing with the um, smartphone and tablet as well. And of course, desktop for supercomputing. Imagine have your own AI system on this system uh, desktop and it's at your home or in your home. All right, so next week, I'm gonna actually talk more about the, um, the uh, tablet or I mean the uh, um, laptop and uh, I'll show you different type of laptop from i5, third generation, i7, second gener generation, all the way to the i7, eighth generation, six core processor. And I'll see, uh, you know, whether it's still, um, you know, relevant to upgrade from i5, third generation to, you know, i7, eighth generation. And I can tell you right now, if you're just doing, you know, word processor, uh, you know, office work, doesn't require heavy, you know, video editing like 4K and all that. I think i5 third and i7 second generation is more than adequate. In fact, I'm still using that, the i7 second generation uh, quad core processor, uh, eight gig RAM. And it's, it's pretty, it's fast. It's pretty, uh, I can't even, uh, you know, I mean, how fast can you go, right? I mean, I can't even take faster than the computer can uh, uh, handle my finger. So. I would say it's more than adequate. So we'll talk about that next week. I'll show you a different uh, computer laptop system. Thanks for watching educatetube.com.